Money Long rose to prominence in the year 2022 as a solo artist with her successful viral hit single, Hours and Hours. The truth is, she's actually been an entertainer for over 14 years and was supposed to be the next big black alternative pop singer. But she ended up falling victim to the shady side of the music industry. Formerly known as her birth name Priscilla Renee, she was forced to put her solo career on pause for nearly a decade. You're a season I'm fixing my hair for you. But in the meantime, she co-wrote songs for some of the biggest names in music across a number of genres and is credited on over 100 tracks. She eventually reinvented herself and stepped back into the spotlight as Money Long. But her journey wasn't easy. And it's one of those stories we hear often from artists who were wronged throughout their career, then was finally given proper recognition later down the line. This is the untold truth about Money Long, formerly known as Priscilla Renee. This is something that I want to do for the rest of my life. This is a career. I wake up every morning to play the piano, to play the guitar, to sing for someone and have someone feel something when they hear what I sung. And, you know, I definitely want to be around. In 10 years, I want people to still know who I am. And, you know, I don't, I don't just want to be a one or two hit wonder. I want to have songs that people can sing and listen to 10 years from now. Priscilla Renee Hirston was born in Cape Canaveral, Florida in 1988 and raised in Vero Beach. She comes from a musical background. Her mother was a lead singer in a band, and her father was a singer and trumpet player who went on to serve in the Navy. Her family relocated frequently, so Priscilla was forced to change schools often. Her love of singing began as a young child and evolved as she grew. Every school she enrolled in, she made sure to join their musical theater, drama clubs, and choirs with dreams of one day being on Broadway. Her mother regularly volunteered her to sing at church, weddings, and funerals. In December 2006, while attending community college, 18-year-old Priscilla entered a Grammy Awards contest where one unsigned unknown artist would win the opportunity to perform on stage with Justin Timberlake during the award show. Priscilla didn't end up winning the contest, but she did upload the video she made of herself singing Justin's Cry Me a River and the Dream Girls and I Am Telling You I'm Not Going to YouTube. Thought it was me and you, baby. Me and you until the end, but I guess I was wrong. I wanna think about it, I wanna talk about it. I'm just so sick about it, can't believe it's sending this way. I'm so confused about it. From then on, she started regularly posting videos on the video sharing platform showcasing her singing ability and doing acoustic covers of songs from her bedroom on her webcam. Her talent generated a generous following across YouTube and MySpace. Her most popular video became a clip of her singing the dictionary over Fergie's Glamorous. In 2007, Priscilla performed on MTV's Say What Karaoke, singing Cassie's Me and You. And while Degrassi actor Drake was rising in popularity as a music artist, she uploaded a viral cover of his first mainstream commercial hit song, Best I Ever Had. Baby, you're my everything. You all I ever wanted, we could do it real big Bigger than you ever done it, you be up on everything They ain't never on it, I want this forever I said I could spend whatever on it, cause you hold me down Her cover went so viral that Drake himself reached out to her via MySpace a producer then invited Priscilla to move to Atlanta to live in a frat-style music house with other up-and-coming artists, songwriters, and producers. And Priscilla gladly gave up her job at a CVS distribution center. She is credited as a co-writer for the song Here I Am on the debut album of the American girl group Girlicious. In 2009, Priscilla caught the attention of Power Entertainment and Capitol Records executives and signed with both labels and relocated to LA to follow her dreams.
In March that year, she released a three-song digital EP titled Hello My Apple, then got to work on her debut album. Producers Benny Blanco and Lil Ronnie jumped on board for the record, while Priscilla wrote most of the songs. In August that year, she released her debut single Dollhouse, an up-tempo pop track that many critics compared to Katy Perry's Hot and Cold. The song became a mild chart success, peaking at number 11 on the Heat Seeker singles chart, number 31 on the Hot Dance Club songs chart, and number 34 on the Pop Songs chart, and it had nearly 40,000 digital downloads by the end of 2009. It was a fun, smart way to talk about women's empowerment and just how to stand up for yourself and not take anyone's crap. Um, so there's an acoustic version and there's also this electro pop version so I think the acoustic version gives you a little little bit of a chance to hear the lyrics and, and understand and feel really what I'm talking about and the you know the up tempo version is kind of like fun you know you can dance whatever and still have fun but you still get the message about what it's about and um, I think you guys will really really like it in your own fantasy world trying to control me like some kind of Barbie but that just her debut album, Jukebox, was released in December that year. The album incorporates elements of both pop and R&B and generated positive reviews, but failed to have the success Priscilla and Capitol Records originally intended. The album only reached number 23 on the Billboard Heat Seekers album chart and completely missed the Billboard 200 albums chart. She embarked on a promotional tour for the album, and by March 2010, she was ready to release her second single titled Love Sick. Love Sick is a song about being in a relationship, and you know, people go through this every day when you're, when you're with someone and you really love them, and they just make you crazy. Like, they make you do things that you would not normally do, like, you know, go outside and smash their car. And it's kind of like Nora Jones meets Lauryn Hill if you think about the sound because Priscilla's able to pick up the guitar and play it fluently. She's able to play the piano fluently, but she also has this hip hop undertone to the production that just makes it very tangible. But when that song failed to chart, the label canceled all plans for the music video. That's when Priscilla's career started to stall, as she would put it, and things ran dry for her solo career. She was already working on her sophomore album, but those plans also went cold. Months before this, it seems like she had already foreshadowed her own career. She talked about the constant influx of new talent releasing hit songs then disappearing into obscurity, saying, I want to survive. I want to still be around, because there's going to be a weeding out. Those who thought they wanted it and didn't really know what it entailed. Those whose records didn't work. Those who didn't do the right thing at the right time. And I just hope that none of those things happen to me. I hope I'm still around and that I'll pull through." End quote. Sometime in 2010, singer and producer Akon asked Priscilla to go on tour with him to write songs. The pair had met back when she temporarily relocated to Atlanta in 2008, and the two established a friendship. During her first session, she wrote a song called Promise This. The song ended up being recorded by English singer Cheryl Cole and became a number one single in the United Kingdom and Ireland by the end of the year. Promise this, be the last to kiss my 
The song was such a hit that even Adele did a cover of it on BBC. After the success of Promise This, Priscilla decided to pursue a career as a songwriter. Capitol Records clearly wasn't interested in her solo music anymore, and she was eager to maintain her music career instead of returning home to Florida. So she called her publisher to help her find other artists to write for. Priscilla would regularly participate in about five songwriting sessions per day for long hours over the course of a year and a half. And the hard work paid off, because in between that time, she penned songs like Rihanna's California King Bed and Watch and Learn for the singer's fifth and sixth studio albums. Beg For It and Don't Wake Me Up by Chris Brown. Dearly beloved, if this love only exists in my dreams, don't wake me up. I wasn't finished dreaming about your love. And Bang 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 and Who Says by Selena Gomez and The Scene. The latter song was being shopped around to different artists and quite a few of them wanted to record Who Says. But former Disney Channel star Selena Gomez loved the song so much that she personally emailed Priscilla begging for it. It's such a small world because Priscilla Renee's grandmother lives in Niagara Falls where I'm from and so her and I have become pretty good friends. She co-wrote the track. She was telling me, and this, this happens quite a big deal, that was one of the last ones to go on your album, right? Yes, it was actually. Uh, no, that one was the first one. I wasn't actually going to record an album. It was actually just going to be that song. Oh. But because of that, that feeling and that vibe we got from it, we just recorded the whole record. And you know, Priscilla, I mentioned, obviously, right away when, when you got the track, you were a pretty big fan of it because it all came together, she said, relatively quickly. Yes, uh, I, I do. I'm sure she told you there's like there were a, a couple of artists that wanted the song. And as soon as I heard it, I sent her like this long email saying how much the song meant to me and how much I feel like it could mean to my fans because I'm in the generation gap where you're kind of growing up and, and I get to try to make a good impact on kids my age, I guess. Who Says went on to become Selena's highest charting single that year, and it was a hit of summer 2011. That year, Priscilla also co-wrote, produced, and provided vocals on songs for Big Sean, Kelly Rowland, Madonna, Demi Lovato, and Mary J. Blige, just to name a few. Like a bitch. But don't be confused, Priscilla never actually intended to fully give up recording her own songs. The label believed that she was better off writing music for other artists instead of continuing her career as a recording artist. She says label executives were sabotaging her. I want it that way, tell me why it ain't nothing but a heartache. For Rated R&B, she said, well, don't think I wasn't trying to put out albums before. It's just the industry, man. It's not what people think it is. It's such drama and like power trip and control. They say, if I get a number one, I'll be able to make my own album. I got a number one in the UK, but that doesn't count. They say, if I get a number one on the Billboard Hot 100, I'll be able to make my own album. By 2013, Priscilla was ready to finally release her sophomore album and recorded its lead single, V.S.O.P. But that song was taken from her and given to singer K. Michelle, which became a hit for the singer. Priscilla said, My publisher took the song and played it for K. Michelle because they did not want me to put my album out. They wanted me to stay writing songs for other people. So the second album ended up shelved because I didn't have a first single. I was like, what the f I don't know anybody anything. Why won't they write their own songs? Why do I have to keep doing this? I was devastated. At 23 years old, Priscilla fired her management team, and in turn, they filed a multi-million dollar lawsuit against her, and the legal fees to fight it stacked up and left Priscilla broke. When I signed with my first management back in 2009, uh, the very first question I asked him when I met him in New York was, are you going to be nice? And I remember he was facing the window with his hands on his hips and he turned around and was like, 
And like he laughed and I was like, did I say something funny? Did I tell a joke? I was like really serious. And based on the way things went over the next four years, it makes sense why he laughed. I just felt that things weren't right. There were questions that went unanswered that should have been easy to answer. You know, we all have that, that radar within us as humans. You know, when the hair start raising up on the back of your neck, something doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. I felt like people took advantage of me. There's a stigma when you're young and you're a musician. You're reckless, you are a rock star, you don't care, you have no respect, no regard for authority. And it was completely the opposite for me. I'm like, dude, I just want to write music. I did fire them, and that turned into like a three-year battle. I thought, if I quit, if I give up, the other people that this is happening to, because I know it ain't just me, if they look up and they see me with as much success as I've had, just imagine how many other people would be like, well, I don't I have a chance in hell. Especially as a brown girl, like a lot of people feel like, nobody's gonna respect you. Like, what do you know? Who's gonna have your back? Financially, he was, Goliath and I was David. The legal bills racked up so fast. I just felt like, what do I need to do to be done with this? In spite of all of this, she still managed to pin the catchy hook of the mega hit song Timber by Pitbull and singer Kesha. It's going down. I'm yelling timber. You better move. The song is certified 15 times platinum in Norway and diamond in the United States making this Priscilla's first U.S. Billboard number 1 song. Over the next several years, she would follow it up with even more hits, like Worth It by American girl group Fifth Harmony. Infinity by Mariah Carey. Something Bad by American country music artists Miranda Lambert and Carrie Underwood. And Imagine by Ariana Grande for her Thank You Next album, along with Just Like Magic and 630 of her Positions album. But despite having co-written platinum-selling charting singles for some of the industry's most sought-after artists and being featured on B.O.B.'s moderate hit song John Doe, along with Diplo's Be Right There, Priscilla found herself in bad and exploitive music contracts where she only got a small percentage of royalties from those songs and none of them could save her from being dropped by her label or bankruptcy. She was also diagnosed with lupus. Priscilla told Rated R&B that after everyone counted her out and everybody left her for dead, she had to learn how to survive. And her battle with lupus was the driving force behind her wanting to give her solo music career another shot. In 2016, Priscilla headed back to the South to give her sophomore album another try after seven years. But this time, she went to the country music capital, Nashville, Tennessee. She decided to fully tap into the country soul genre, which she says she's always had a love for. Priscilla grew up in the South with a grandmother who owned a farm and an uncle who was a black cowboy. After all, California King Bed, Don't Wake Me Up, Something Bad, and Timber were all country songs. Her sophomore album titled Colored finally arrived on June 22, 2018 through the 30 Tigers Music Distribution Company for independent artists based in Nashville. The name was intentionally meant to symbolize the way black artists and country music have historically been labeled. The same genre that African Americans helped pioneer and hasn't always been inclusive when it came to black performers. Colored is an autobiographical album detailing her childhood trauma, racial issues, and heartbreak. It wasn't a billboard charting album, but it was well perceived by critics. Even Mariah Carey gave it her stamp of approval. Priscilla promoted the record with a special show at the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum. 
Less than two years later, the singer-songwriter launched her own record label, Supergiant Records, in January 2020 and rebranded as Money Long. She says the name Muni, which she pronounces as money, means to think deeply, to look from within in Filipino, and it also serves as a double entendre when long is added at the end. Money Long is the part of me that I always needed. She's the protector of Priscilla. I knew I wanted to focus on me. I've been serving others for the last 12 years, and I started to feel unappreciated and captive. I always wanted to be Money Long though. She's fearless. She has intent. She is me. Priscilla released her first EP as Money Long through her label titled Black Like This in November 2020. This was followed by two other EPs in 2021, which all racked up thousands of streams and views on YouTube. In November that year, shortly after releasing her EP, Public Displays of Affection, Money's makeup artist, who's also the fiance of all-American actress Breezy, shared a romantic video on Instagram documenting their relationship, accompanied with a song recorded by Money titled Hours and Hours. Yours, mine, ours, I could do. The video went viral, and so did the song. Same-sex couples began posting their own tribute videos to TikTok. Hours and Hours was a last-minute addition to her EP and ended up becoming a smash hit for the first half of 2022. It reached number 16 on Billboard's Hot 100 with over 12 million streams in the United States alone and also reached number one on Billboard's Hot R&B chart and has more than 70 million streams on Spotify. Just two months after making its debut on Billboard, Hours and Hours was certified platinum by the Recording Industry Association of America, and the success led to a partnership with Def Jam Records and her Supergiant record label. She has also received a Grammy nomination for Album of the Year for her work on the album Back of My Mind by singer Her. I wish I never fell in love too. With over 1.3 million TikTok videos and the number one spot on Apple Music and iTunes R&B singles chart to Spotify's US Viral 50 and Global Viral 50, the spotlight is finally on Priscilla after spending over a decade fighting for a chance and writing songs that turned artists into superstars. I've told you guys so many stories about artists not getting a fair shot in the music industry and Priscilla Renee is just another name added to the list. Songwriters are severely underappreciated and don't really get the credit they deserve. We tend to give all the praise to artists who only show up to record the songs. She's still releasing new music, and I'll leave a link so that you guys can support Money Long's latest project. Are there any OG Priscilla Renee fans watching this video right now? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, like this video, and subscribe to Black Femininity TV for more content.